everyone. Welcome to Marie Selby Botanical Garden's Sarasota Manatee Ecoflora Project. To help beat the heat, we're going to be leaping into lilies in this month's EcoQuest, Leaping into Lilies. My name is Anastasia Salen and I'm the Director of Environmental Education here at Selby Gardens. And I'm going to be interviewing Sean Patton, one of our Ecoflora coordinators, who is an expert in aquatic plants and aquatic habitat restoration. Sean, it's great to have you. Can you tell us a little bit about what defines a water lily? Hey Anastasia, it's great to be the interviewee for once for one of these, and water lilies are actually one of my specialties. So water lilies are a group of freshwater plants that are characterized by having long, slender stems with a big floating leaf like this. And many of the times you identify them with the ribs underneath the leaf. And all water lilies have a few similar characteristics. These floating leaves, generally large, showy flowers, such as in that um, Asian water lily, and they all have very large rhizomal growing roots. And these roots can vary from species to species. Some are large and woody, some are small and floating, but all of them use these roots to come back from periods of dormancy, where um, whether there's not enough rain or it's too cold, they'll come back at the end of the season. While all water lilies are in the genus Nymphaea, many water lily-like plants that we've opened this EcoQuest up to are actually distantly related, but all look and act similar due to convergent evolution. You have some like Nufar advena, the spatter dock, you have the Brasnerias and the water shields, and then you also have the floating hearts, the Nymphoides. And many of these come from very different unrelated groups, but they all come to have this stereotypical water lily look. That's amazing, Sean. What kinds of animals do they support? So lilies form quite a few important functions. One of the best is habitat. All these big lilies are walked on by some wading birds, specifically gallinules and moorhens, that have very long, slender toes to walk upon the surface of the lily pads. Then you also get um, all the aquatic animals fish, invertebrates, amphibians live under the lilies and use them to hide from larger predators. And in fact, some like largemouth bass rely on worms and invertebrates living in certain lily pad roots in order to grow healthier and stronger. They found a lot of commensalism between these species. Lilies are an important and healthy part of any wetland ecosystem. Are there any other kinds of cool facts about water lilies that you want to share with us? All water lilies occupy some of the same areas and that's why they have this convergent evolution. You'll usually always see them in fresh water, shallow, warm, generally full sun to part sun areas where they're not being shaded out by trees or other plants. Many of these plants are also in ethereal wetlands or wetlands that come and go through the seasons, whether that's due to snow or uh, drought. So you'll see these guys throughout the world in these habitats. Always fresh water and generally full sun, shallow warm water. Oh wow, there are quite a few different kinds of floating lilies, but what kind of ecological function do they serve? Water lilies offer several important ecosystem services in the communities that they are in. Not only do they help provide habitat for quite a few species, but they also help to reduce erosion, specifically wind and wave-based erosion whipping across the pond. It hits the lilies and slows them down. You also get a lot of water filtration. These plants are very good for aquatic habitats, helping to reduce nutrient pollution. And the big lily pads help to shade out algae growing beneath them. All of these can help make a healthy wetland ecosystem. Thanks so much for joining us today, Sean. It sounds like water lilies have gorgeous flowers and they have a lot to offer the ecosystem. So I have one more question for you. What are the most common water lilies and where can we find them in this month's EcoQuest? Hmm. Well, again, thanks for having me on here. I always love talking about plants with Selby. <laughs> and some of my favorite water lilies that are gonna be pretty common are gonna be spatter dock, Nufar advena, which has these big yellow flowers, also known as the cow lily, they'll slap all over the water. The fragrant water lily, which gets big, beautiful white flowers. And then there's also the fairly rare Nymphaea elegans, which is the blue water lily. All three of those are native to Florida. There's also quite a few that are not native that you might find. 
and some good places to go looking for water lilies are Redbug Slough, which is where we're going to do the Eco Quest this month, uh, Mayaka, Oscar Shear, and many retention ponds throughout many communities. And we want to know what water lilies are out there. What are you seeing? And if you can find any of the more rare ones, those are also always amazing to see. We hope to see you out there in this month's EcoQuest, Leaping, Leaping into, into Water, water Lilies! lilies.